So look, uh, our next session is going to be something a um, little bit different. It's, it's something we've done before, although it's a, it's a changing cast of characters. Uh, we wanted to hear directly from the folks on the PowerShell team, uh, the folks who are actually creating the stuff that goes out to all of us. So I want to introduce you to two people. Um, Michael Green is the program manager for desired state configuration. Michael's been hanging out with our community for a long time. He's attended my DSC camp. Uh, his, his, his head is drilled right in the middle of that area. And Joey Ayo is the program manager for PowerShell Core, which is a thing. Yep. It's a thing, yeah. uh, and he's got a, a fun, very atypical, non-usual background for someone at Microsoft that really makes him perfect for that. He kind of comes from that open source world and, and, and lived in that place. Uh, and it's great that he can kind of bring that into Microsoft now. So without further ado, I'm going to let these guys run with it, and uh, I will be right back after they're done, and we'll get you into lunch from there. Yeah? Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks Take it away. Thanks so much, Don. Thanks. You hear us okay? Both of us? Cool. <laughs> okay, awesome. so the, uh, this is going to be a good session uh, in terms of you're going to meet a lot of different people. So although you're going to hear from Joey and I, and we're going to cover a bunch of different topics, we're also going to bring up some other people to come up and talk. Uh, oh, your, your mic is not. Oh. It's on, but it may not be positioned correctly. Maybe I'll just hold it up. Uh, so let's start and talk about just what's going on with the team. That's traditionally, the, we, in the past, uh, if you've been to PowerShell summits before, we do this state of the shell session, uh, which is a little bit of insight into what's going on with the team, right? What's, uh, what are you guys doing inside of Microsoft? What are your plans for the future? That kind of stuff. So we just wanted to start off and talk about the team itself. Um, over the past year, you may have heard uh, the PowerShell team got brought into the Azure uh, management organization. We've got a, a really simple name of uh, Azure Security and, oh, perfect. Uh, Azure Security and Operational Management Services. Uh, so I just typically call it Azure Management. And the PowerShell team has been moved over into the Azure Management Services. Uh, that's been a really good thing. It's definitely helped us to have a, a better relationship. Um, in cloud management and understand the requirements of that space. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about this, but one of the things we keep seeing is how th the more that we ourselves have to live by um, creating tools at cloud scale, then the outcomes just get better and better for the community. So the, the closer we get to cloud, the more we have to move fast and we have to create things that scale really well. And then the byproduct of that is that when we go out and work on open source projects, we're just taking those outcomes and bringing them closer and closer to the platform where people can go do more interesting things with that. Uh, so the most recent uh, change is we are now part of Azure Compute. So if you think about uh, whether you're, you're using Azure or not, you can uh, think about the idea of running a virtual machine in the cloud, right? Think, think about that uh, at its core concept. There's a lot more to it than that of, of running Azure Compute. Uh, we have reorged over into that group now. So what does that mean for you? And actually all of Azure management. It means more of that same pattern. So getting closer and closer to that core concept of, OK, now we're going to start sw switch modes from thinking just about how we're going to manage all these things at scale to how do you make management a core function within compute and think closer to uh, uh, how do we move beyond the concept of compute being a VM to compute being scale sets and containers and serverless and things like that. Uh, and what does that mean? Uh, for the team, it means, again, that the outcome of us doing that work means that when we go work on open source projects like PowerShell Core and taking DSC open source, that we can take things like DSC and instead of thinking about running them at tens of thousands of nodes, we think about millions of nodes. Uh, and that pays a lot of dividends. Yeah, and oh no, I mean, and, and just from a pure convenience standpoint, like compute is where we've had to be investing our time in fulfilling compute uh, enabled re uh, scenarios. So for instance, Azure Cloud Shell is part of compute. And we've been working very closely with Cloud Shell to make PowerShell work great with it. Well, now we're in the same organization. So those things, those conversations just become that much easier uh, uh, to have. Another one is the, the IaaS uh, images, right? Uh, the fact that we, we would like to get PowerShell Core um, into Azure VMs so that you have it available from the get-go. Uh, those sorts of problems are just much easier to solve when you're sitting down the hall uh, or, or you share a manager with someone that, that also owns those decisions because it really only rolls up to, to one or two people. So um, we're just hoping that you know, for, for all these cloud-based scenarios, and Jeffrey talked a lot about how you know, the, the future of the world is enabled by REST, uh, and, and a lot of that swagger effort was, was driven by compute, 
you know, we're just going to be closer and closer to the scenarios that you guys have to do to get your jobs done. So um, it's just good news all around. Yeah, you'll see reinforcement of this in the lightning demos this afternoon. We're going to take some of those lessons learned uh, that have generated real product changes, and you'll see them firsthand. And then I think uh, you've got a session tomorrow on yep. PowerShell Core, and I've got a session on Wednesday for DSC. Uh, and we'll go into a lot, in a lot more detail there. So let's start um, by bringing some individuals up. And uh, why don't you guys come up together? So Nir is the new manager over PM. Uh, so we talked earlier with Kenneth and Angel. Uh, Nir is our boss, so we'll welcome him to the stage. And Ruhi manages the entire dev organization. I'm going to hand off my microphone if you guys want to individually introduce yourselves. And... Thanks, Michael. I'm Ruhi Maliti, engineering manager for PowerShell, DSC, automation. Really happy to be here. Uh, like uh, Michael was saying, and Jeffrey has been mentioning this morning, it's never been more exciting with the PowerShell team and the work we're doing. It's really about all the work that we've been doing to make it work at large, to make it work for our cloud services. It's challenging. Every day we have challenges. Every day we have to look at different things. But the best part of it is when we're looking at those things, we're bringing down all of those things back to the core platform. Uh, the learnings that we have as part of our engineering cycles, as part of our development cycles, we live through some of those pains. Uh, we bring it back to the core platform. We absolutely, absolutely love the fact that we've been able to work with all of you guys. You have been absolutely fantastic in giving us the feedback on what to work through and whatnot. And that really encourages us. It's not just that we work on it. It really makes us believe that we're working on the stuff that you truly, really care for. Two big core principles I'll mention uh, which drive the engineering team is, one is definitely what Jeffrey was also mentioning and Satya has been pushing for. Talk to your customers, really live and breathe what they want and not imagine what they might need in six months, a year down the line and build for it, right? So this is what we, with your help, we're trying to really embrace and do is listening to you all, trying to learn from what we're trying to build and ship and that really helps us uh, deliver. So that's really uh, understand and live and build the customers. And the other engineering principle we truly believe in is fail fast. So we try to build stuff and we try to really ship it and deploy as soon as we can. Uh, in fact, some of the things that uh, the feature list that Jeffrey was mentioning, like update change, inventory automation, we do multiple deployments a day in production across multiple regions. This is because we want to ship it and learn from it and then go fix it, remediate it, and then ship it back in the platform as you get part of Windows PowerShell and PowerShell Core. So those are really two core principles that drive us customers and being able to ship quickly so we fail and learn fast from it. Uh, but it's been an amazing journey. It's been a learning journey. It keeps uh, challenging us every day, uh, and it keeps motivating us. And really thanks to all of you guys. And the last thing before I hand over to Neer, I'll say is we're really excited about the reorg as well, like both Michael and Joey were saying. Um, we have been working with a lot of these clouds, uh, on a lot of these cloud solutions and management solutions for compute, whether it's update, inventory, change, uh, integration with automation, a bunch of things, right? It's all been, so being part of that team, it's not like we're talking across teams or across those things. Yes, we can do that, but sometimes it's just easier when it's part of their core priority and it's part of the core business rather than we working with them from an outside team. So actually looking forward and really excited about these changes. And some of this is just like a month ago, right? So we're yeah. still working through some of those changes, but yes. And uh, welcome to the summit. Really happy to be meeting all of you guys throughout today and through the week. Um, now to Neer. Thank you, Ruhi. So, Kenneth, are you in the room, by the way? No, What's I saw him minute? earlier. Uh, Anher is here, and um, you know, when I was thinking about what I'm going to talk about, the first thing that came to my mind is, how am I ever going to replace uh, these two giants that came uh, before me, uh, that really took the community from the early days of PowerShell to this amazing crowd today? And I think that a lot of kudos, they deserve a lot of kudos for doing that. I've been working in Microsoft for 17 years now, and I've worked with Angel and, and Kenneth for at least seven of them. <laughs> um, so, you know, and I've seen, I've, I've been working in Windows Server, so I've seen that PowerShell 
going from one release to another and, and making more and more headway uh, with the help of Jeffrey and with the help of the, of the folks that are in the room, Hammond, Joy, Keith is not here, he's in Europe, um, and Danny, which just joined us. So there is a lot of backbone in PowerShell, and there is actually a huge backbone outside of Microsoft, which is you guys. Um, so the, the future is really, really very bright, as far as I can see. When I looked at the numbers as I came into the team just two weeks ago, I saw that there's more than a million Linux machines running PowerShell 6, which is just mind-blowing. You know, you saw the Azure stack being based just on you know, PowerShell to run all the automation, to run a completely uh, aut autonomous, uh, very, very complex system. These things that we're doing with PowerShell are just mind-boggling. And there are other things that are going on in the market, other shares, you know, CLI is, get, is, is making a comeback. I was, it was really funny to me to see CLI, you know, I, it, from my age, I've been coding for now 30 years. So, uh, you know, CLI was back then when, when we started and I remember PowerShell taking over and it was just the new thing that was awesome. And now I see CLI coming back as the new thing that's awesome. So, you know, I think that, you know, there's many people in the world Different people like different things, and PowerShell is here to stay, and it's absolutely amazing. The, the ability for us to now ship an open source project in a very high velocity way is so, so much better than just shipping in Windows. And now that it's working on any platform from any client, it's so much better. Uh, you can see, you know, one of Jeffrey's prediction was you know, we're just going to run PowerShell 6 in Cloud Shell on Linux machines, on Linux containers. That was just a simple switch for us to go try. Whereas if we were a year back, it would have taken us, I don't know how long, to go and do that, but at least a year. So the team, the team did an amazing job taking PowerShell from Windows into open source. We're going to go and make the Windows command let's work on PowerShell 6. We're going to go get the ecosystem up and going on PowerShell 6 so we can transition into PowerShell 6 and run everything that we're doing with PowerShell across any machine on the planet, both containers and NVMs, and as well as, of course, on the clouds themselves. So th there is a huge, huge roadmap ahead that's just going to be awesome. Now. My wife keeps telling me that I can't just say things, I need to prove them. So I'm not going to promise you anything. But let me tell you a little bit about uh, what I did a few weeks back. So I, I, I come from the Windows Server team. I worked on security for Windows Server 16. So the security pillar, I own the security pillar on Windows Server 16. And one of the major things that, uh, that we did back then, I still remember the early days of planning, uh, Jeffrey came to me and said, hey, you know, there's going to be a huge shift. We have to go think about security. And we kind of huddled together with Jeffrey and Anders Winberg and thought about what, what can we do to really make secure, change security to deal with the new world of advanced persistent threats and ransomware and all these kind of things. How can we go make Windows the best platform with security? One of the technologies there that Jeffrey and I still remember, like sitting in this room, came up with, you know, really Jeffrey came up with, I was just sitting in this room, uh, was uh, just enough administration. Uh, anybody here, uh, do you guys know what just enough administration is? Okay, good. Uh, how many of you guys are using just enough administration? Okay. That's, that's excellent. And as you see, you know, uh, Jeffrey was also putting it in Azure Stack. But just to kind of tell you where I'm coming from, with just enough administration, you know, we did the basic, you know, let's, let's use constraint uh, run space, and then let's, uh, let's configure it, and let's show some, um, let, let's get it out there. And, you know, we got a few following, which was awesome but it wasn't enough. 
because we really want to, this is one of the key technologies to help, that we can use with PowerShell to help our customers secure their servers. So there was this um, new project called, I, I don't even remember how it's called now, but it was managing servers from Azure, managing on-prem. Anybody knows what the project was? Do you remember the name of the project? I forgot already, because we killed it. But, you know, <laughs> it was, I hated that project. I just hated it, but I came, you know, I came to, you know, back then to, to the architect of that product and I said, look, you're going to manage Windows machine from the cloud, that's crazy, but okay, let's use GIA on that project so that at least we're going to be able to do just enough administration, role-based administration through a UI using PowerShell to manage Windows system. And then, uh, you know, he said, no, 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 we have other priorities, we first need to make it run and then we'll uh, then we will uh, implement GIA. And I said, you know, okay, fine, you know, I, I can go just as far. Uh, then one day, a year ago, I get called by my manager back then, the uh, GM for server, and she said, hey, you know, Nir, you're taking over that team. Um, so I took over the team, the, the, the Windows Server Management team, and it's called today, I don't know if you know the name, Honolulu. Okay, so Windows Admin Center, and I think that today at three we're going to show you how GI is integrated into Windows Admin Center. So this just, this just comes to show that, you know, we can really take PowerShell and the PowerShell capabilities and integrate them into many, many different things that we're doing in, in Microsoft and delight customers and make our products so much better. Now, what this whole story comes to show is that I'm very persistent. And I'm very, very much about, let's do the right thing, let's listen to our community, let's collaborate with you guys and with customers to really get, get our technology and our customer uh, satisfaction to the next level. And this is, we're going to be about building you know, a great team building a great set of technologies that are customers focused and bring that to as wide this community as we can with PowerShell 6. So that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruhi Anya. We're really excited. Should I, should I also mention uh, just real quick my, my new direct manager? I think that'd be a good um, yeah, idea. yeah. So I just take this take this opportunity to maybe show off a little bit. Show off. He's been around a little while. Yeah, yeah. No. So uh, many of you know, uh, I think Hamant uh, Mahawar, who uh, has also recently uh, been promoted as my new manager. Um, so uh, yeah, Keith, Keith, Danny, and I are going to be working for Hamant, uh, who's who's going to be driving driving PowerShell all up. Um, yeah, come on up. So you've, you've been around, you probably have seen a few things in PowerShell, if you want to uh, say hello to everybody. Howdy. <laughs> uh, We're totally putting him on the spot here, so yeah. be, be nice, be nice to Heyman. I've, I've been around with you guys for about 12 years now, so I've done PowerShell from version 1 all the way to 6, and any part of PowerShell that you're using except PowerShell Core 6, which is all his fault, uh, there's some <laughs> of my work over there. Um, and. Uh, Jeffrey, Neer, and Rui already covered a lot of it, but one thing that you guys should take is no other team in Microsoft has this kind of following that you guys provide with PowerShell. And when you go and talk to teams like, oh, we have PowerShell, oh, we want customer feedback, we have about 20,000. People are like, what? So all the work that you have done in adopting PowerShell, embracing PowerShell, and spreading the word about PowerShell, that's awesome. Please continue doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Heyman. We're really excited. It's all, all good stuff in the future, guys. So we're going to make a quick transition. This is, I love the lightning demos in the afternoon. That's my favorite part. And then the community lightning demos uh, tomorrow afternoon, just seeing live demos, that's my favorite part of the summit. My second favorite part is this next section. Um, we started this last year, and last year our focus was let's have the team 
pick 10 contributors that are really making a big impact on the open source projects that we're managing and give them an award, like really recognize them in front of the community. And then by the end of it, we're like, wow, that was really hard. <laughs> like figuring out who's making a contribution as uh, from, from just our perspective didn't feel like it was all encompassing enough. So this year we reached out to Don and we said, hey, we would really like to make this an ongoing thing. We'd like to recognize PowerShell heroes uh, and we would like to take this much broader. Like we would like to get input from as many people as possible. So he and his 15,000 Twitter followers, um, he published a survey and uh, ran it for about three months. And just, there were, there were tons and tons of response, hundreds of responses, uh, and a lot of it was people saying like, here's a person and you know, just example after example of they've made a difference in my life, whether it's, uh, I follow them on Reddit, I read their blog posts, I read Stack Overflow posts, uh, they've come to my user group and talked. Just the overwhelming sense of community going through that spreadsheet was unbelievable. But we narrowed it down to seven people uh, that really, besides having the most votes, when you went through the anecdotal evidence as to what contributions they had been making, it's just unbelievable, the amount of free time uh, this not free time anymore once you devote it entirely to I don't know how you guys find the time some yeah. of, some of these folks are, are definitely operating on you know 30 hour days so uh, yeah. yeah in addition to the 40 hours a week that they're working or 60 or however many they're putting in they're also finding time to help the community uh, so similar to last year we have an award to give out to each person uh, and if you check Twitter I think there's already probably a picture getting posted up uh, up close to look at these but um, it just says PowerShell Open Source Projects. We stuck with that name for its, it keeps it consistent with last year. It's the, a similar award to last year. Um, but also we wanted to represent that it's not just the PowerShell team who's giving this award. Uh, it's the entire community recognizing these people for making a big contribution and making all of our lives better. And then it just says Community Hero 2018. So uh, we actually have the PowerShell hero herself here uh, to come help us give awards away. And then I'll also mention, yeah, there you go. Uh, I'll also mention that uh, after this session, we have put a, at least enough stickers for everybody who brought a laptop today of the PowerShell Hero. Um, and there's more where that came from if we run out. There's also the PowerShell Hero comic book. The, you know, the digital version is online, but you can get the print version back there. And we also have PowerShell Hero posters. Uh, so we're sticking with the PowerShell Hero avatar for sure. Uh, don't be shot. There's at least four times the amount of posters and comic books that we put on the table back there. So take five and hang them around your office. Don't feel like, oh, if I take more than one, I'm being a bad person. You're not. You're getting, you're, right now, Nier's office is full of cardboard boxes. So you're just doing him a favor by taking more. Uh, if you run a user group and you would like to take 20 or 40 back, reach out to one of us or Don or Chris or somebody around and we'll give you a shrink wrapped package full of comic books and posters and you can take those back. And so we want to start doing more of this and making things available to the community. Uh, so. Well, before, before we dive in, just real quick, can we give Jenny a round of applause for awesome? unbelievable costume? Seriously. We went all out on this, so. Really, really cool. All right. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's get down to it. So our first PowerShell hero, and I believe he is here in person somewhere. Adam, He's, where are you? There he is. Awesome. <laughs> Chances are you have read something that Adam has published before. I think the first line of the first point really makes it, it drives it home. Uh, I just loved all these comments. Here you go, Jenny. We have our, our photog. Thank you. Adam Bertram. Yes, this next one, uh, is Lee Daly here today? I don't know if Lee? Lee's here or not. I don't think so. Um, so this was actually one of, the, one of the more interesting ones for us because um, I tangentially know Lee from the PowerShell subreddit, uh, but I, I didn't know his name really well right off the bat, but we went and dug into the level of contribution that he's making out of the subreddit and just really were astounded by how much uh, he replies to, to comments, to threads that are, you know, one upvote, someone has a question, uh, like Lee's jumping in the thread to help him out. So 
Um, really, it's uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of text here, uh, but you know this this man breathes PowerShell from his very core. Uh, you know he's he he really all all of these things speak to the level of of. Uh, how much I should be using Reddit, and I'm not. Yeah, I'm seriously. No <laughs> uh, but just the, the level of consistency that he has in, in helping people out uh, on, on the yeah. PowerShell subreddit. So I'll um, track him down and get that award shipped out. Absolutely. Cool. Over here. Yep. I'm super, super stoked about this next one, Warren Frame. I know he's here. <laughs> There's no hiding. Warren, you have to come up. There he is. <laughs> exactly. So if you've seen PS Cookie Monster, uh, that's Warren. Again, super active. Uh, he's brought me out to talk to user groups in Boston uh, in the Lisa conference. But going through these, the number of people who mentioned that they've personally worked with Warren and he's helped them was just awesome. So thank you, Warren. You're a PowerShell hero. Warren's, Warren's also one of the most humble guys you'll ever meet. I, I, it's, it, he's sitting there teaching me all these things about PowerShell when we first met and just, oh, I'm sure you're the expert on this, but you know, no, 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 you're, you're the expert on this, Warren. So. And if you follow him, like every few months, there'll be a new project that he's working on, and it's because he's found a gap somewhere in the process of people using the tools, and he just takes it upon himself to start a new open source project, and he partners really well with lots of people, and he's just awesome. So. This next one, I think a few people have run into from time to time. <laughs> Don, do you want to come up? We probably don't spend enough time recognizing Don Jones. Don recognized a lot of people today. But we do have to make sure that we recognize Don as well. So the story that I love to tell mm -hmm. is uh, I learned PowerShell originally by taking a class with Don Jones. I don't know when that was. It was right after uh, PowerShell 1.0. Yeah, thir 30 Days of Lunches was influential to me learning uh, PowerShell when I first joined the team four, three, four years ago. So thank you, Don. This next one is one of my favorites. I don't believe uh, that this person is here today. I think we will run into her next week. Um, yes, but, but uh, many of you in the SQL community and many of you outside the SQL community are well familiar with Chrissy Lemaire, who uh, runs, uh, uh, with some help, the, the DBA Tools Project. Um, Chrissy, uh, she's just, I mean, first of all, she's an infectious person to meet. She's just happy and enthusiastic and stoked all the time. Uh, but she also just uh, created this community of, of SQL DBAs who were passionate around PowerShell um, and were able to, to completely run their own community. Uh, I mean, they've got uh, you know, community governance. Uh, they've got modules that are owned by the DBA Tools project itself uh, that, that everyone's a community contributor on. Um, and and uh, you know, she's, she's really popular on the, the speaking circuit as well. I know if she were here, she'd probably uh, be begging that I give credit to other people uh, who have been involved in this thing. And that, that really just speaks to the kind of person that Chrissy is. So we'll make sure that she gets her uh, award when we see her next week at the uh, European Summit. And then I think one more. <laughs> Pretty sure Kevin is here. Yep. Hey, awesome. There he is. Oh, you have one more. <laughs> super, super active among user groups. Um, yeah, Kevin runs uh, PowerShell user groups in Southern California. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And uh, obviously see content from Kevin all the time. Yeah, there's a... Um, there's a, there's by, a by the way, if everyone could just look exactly like your thumbnail on Twitter, it would be much easier to get around all week. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin's also, you know, in addition to the user group, just been putting all, out all kinds of content, blogs, modules. Uh, there's a comment here, um, you know, saying, I'm worried he might burn out trying to get an MVP. Um, but uh, I think everybody's just really gracious to Kevin for the contributions that he made. So thank you to all of our PowerShell heroes. You, you are all. One more. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, whoop, whoop, yeah. whoop, whoop, whoop. This, <laughs> yep, sorry. I think David is here. Is David I'm here? I'm not sure if he's here or not. He's going to be here this week. He I don't will. Know if he's here this morning. Yes. Uh, who, so, go ahead. who in this room knows David Wilson? Yeah, okay. So we don't really have to go into too much detail. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, do you want, you want to? 
Yeah, so, yeah, so David, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, pre previously worked at Microsoft. Uh, he left Microsoft a few months ago, uh, November, I think. But huge, huge contributor to the VS Code project and having the PowerShell extension uh, to, to make the editor services work so well um, across VS Code, but then extending that in other platforms as well. Yeah, and in addition to that, um, David's also one of the nicest guys you ever meet. Um, extremely responsive on Twitter, hangs out in the PowerShell Slack, responds to people on all kinds of GitHub issues. There's really a, a kind of a moving story here about um, someone who posted an open source project that was wrapping the editor services API um, and how David, uh, you know, no one else had, had even discovered this repo. Um, and David sort of tracked it down um, and filed an issue against it and, you know, asked him, you know, whether he needed help in, in some certain areas. And, uh, uh, and this person said that that really kept them uh, engaged in open source and really, really made them understand the value of open source. So David truly is one of those one of those people that that champions OSS uh, in the best possible way. So. Yeah, and the fact that he stayed stayed engaged. Yeah. After changing roles. Is amazing. Yeah. So thanks again to everybody. I mean, you you are all really PowerShell heroes. Our community is is really our hero. But but uh, uh, we we're glad to be able to recognize those people that really stand stand above. And this is something we want to keep doing. So stay alert as the beginning of the calendar year rolls around to 2019. We'll publish a new survey and uh, we'll get a new set of PowerShell heroes each year. I think it's an important thing to keep going. So I know that we are between you and your lunch, but we've got a little bit more to cover. Um, we're going to change gears again and. Uh, what we'd like to talk about next is our roadmap and where we see things going. Um, just to connect this with the content that you saw from Jeffrey, uh, this is a really steering, like a, a pivot in our decisions, um, where you, know, you, you keep hearing cloud changes everything, and then in reality it's not just cloud, and it's not just hybrid cloud, it's the concept of digital transformation. And what does it mean to start assessing your core value and taking things that are not that core value and thinking about how you can automate those things away, figure out what actually makes you more valuable to your organization, and then how do we help you in figuring that out and then having the tools so that you can move quickly and accomplish those things. When you figure out things are core value, do you have the tools you need so that you can react and, and build and iterate quickly? Uh, DSC camp, that's something we talk about all the time, is you know, it's not just that I want to accomplish this goal, it's how quickly can I hit MVP and then iterate and iterate and iterate and keep making more changes. Um, let's talk about this first as kind of a big picture concept. Uh, we mentioned moving over into Azure Compute and how important it is um, and how much it shifts us from being tool, tool makers and advisors looking at the platform to becoming part of that platform and having greater influence. Uh, so when we talk about Microsoft Azure being at the core of that circle, it doesn't mean that we're Azure only. It means that uh, we have a, a seat at that table, right? And, and we get to participate in the conversations at that level of scale. Uh, this graphic, the, what it's really trying to portray, and if anybody has a creative idea how to make this more effective at displaying this idea, I'd love to hear it, but I haven't seen anything yet. Um, maybe an infinity symbol might be another way to think about it. The idea is that all of these things are happening all the time. And PowerShell is woven into every single one of these. So throughout the process, so we, we, you know, maybe 10 years ago, we would always think about the application life cycle. And what is, it was laid out like a rope on the floor. There was a beginning and the end, and you can identify parts along the way, uh, but it was the process of deployment through retirement. And that was the application life cycle and managing it all the way along. And now things are moving so fast and changing so quickly that from the point that you start thinking about having a project, you can also start thinking about, okay, well, after it starts running, what am I going to have to do to keep that thing alive in production? So it's going to have to be monitored. It's going to have to be kept up to date. I'm going to have to make sure that it's in the production ready state. I'm going to have to have a plan for if something goes wrong, how do I bring it back? So all of these things are happening from the moment the project starts all the way, all the way through uh, the last part of decommissioning. Um, so as you're developing a PowerShell skill set, and it's interwoven into each of these phases, a, a lot of times our team will look at this and say, oh, well, you know, our, our biggest part of this is configure, and it's easy for us to understand how PowerShell fits into configure. Uh, and then as we look on to things like policy and how DSC can become part of that, you see us start to cover a little, a little bit of your skill set moves over into governance. 
Um, and all the way through, and the same could definitely be said about monitoring. I'm sure that many of you have used PowerShell for monitoring. So that's the way, as, as you think about, okay, well, for a team that focuses on a language, and you're saying you've been part of Azure management, and now Azure, Azure Compute, well, how does that benefit me? This, these are the things that we're looking at, and how do we help your skill sets be very effective at running these things? Yeah, and I, I will be the first to, to admit that for a couple of these uh, uh, processes, PowerShell um, is maybe not as well integrated as it is for some of the other ones, like configuration. Um, part of this reorganization, uh, first of all, is going to help us address some of those things. PowerShell is going to just be more in the face of everyone running all of the, uh, uh, the different parts of this life cycle. Um, there's also an interesting aspect to this, though. Um, as Michael sort of alluded to, uh, really the Azure aspect from a PowerShell standpoint is that we have a seat at a table where high scale is happening, right? Uh, but our commitment to PowerShell being an open source means that all of those benefits are flowing back into a totally open and transparent code base. Um, so even if, you know, while, while we'd love for all of these processes uh, uh, in, in your environment to be in Azure, um, even if you have parts of these um, in other environments, VMware, AWS, on-prem with Windows Server, on-prem with Linux, um, there are aspects of the improvements that we're making in PowerShell and open source that are going to help you in those places as well. So for instance, the remote debugging stuff uh, uh, that Jeffrey was showing off before, uh, that's gonna benefit everyone. Right, uh, and, and really everyone that's at cloud scale, and, and we're seeing this start to happen already with uh, uh, the Power CLI commandlets uh, working in PowerShell Core, uh, uh, the, the AWS commandlets, the, uh, the Google uh, Cloud Platform commandlets, excuse me. Um, so, you know, there, there's a, a commercial aspect and a service aspect to a lot of this stuff, but, but we also uh, uh, know that, that PowerShell really needs to stand on its own and, and support these scenarios irrespective uh, of what platform you're on because that's ultimately better for the, the ecosystem and better for you guys. Yeah, one of the projects I keep uh, thinking about like, and, and looking at how they're making this progress work uh, is Kubernetes. So you can think about Kubernetes as something that Google created for their container platform and then they made it open source. So as their adoption grows and they get better and faster and more reliable, then that code gets exposed. The community is also contributing. And then you have people take that project and go run it. So whether you're running it in your data center, Azure is now running it for Azure Kubernetes services. So as each of these cloud services continues to grow, you've got the commercial software offering running as a service, getting better and faster, going to millions of nodes, far greater nodes than any other data center in the world. And then the open source project is just seeing the outcome of that over and over and over again, like many times per day, becoming more reliable, becoming easier to deploy, becoming easier to become part of a, a greater tooling ecosystem. Uh, so I'm hoping the same thing is, is happening with DSC as we've seen um, adoption. We're gonna pull up some telemetry numbers. As we've seen broad adoption, we've seen the same thing. So uh, what we're hoping is by taking DSC open source, what we've seen um, as, as DSC has gone through the growth curve is you start off with this great platform and people are building a lot of resources and it's very DIY. And you create a cloud service and you make it a little bit easier and you see these numbers go, you know, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands and they keep growing. And then we started integrating with other cloud services. Okay, let's take that new code behind the DSC project and start using it in things like change tracking and inventory and update management and, you know, Azure Security Center. And all of a sudden it went two and a half million nodes. Like, oh, that's a lot more. Right, so you just start seeing that, okay, well now we've got a way that we can make that new DSC engine very fast and very easy to deploy and very easy to manage. Let's make that an open source project. Now anybody who wants to use that new LCM gets the benefit of all that work. Um, we've seen really tremendous growth over the last year. So uh, the automation service where you can put a PowerShell script in Azure or you can have it manage what we call a hybrid runbook worker where you can do like command and control from a centralized SaaS service, but then have the script execution happen in your data center. That just crossed the threshold, we're doing over a million jobs per day. So we're doing on average around 30 million jobs a month that are being run by customers through Azure Automation uh, and using that primarily orchestration tools, right? So you can think about how would I use that when you're starting that project. You know, it used to be, hey, we're gonna like build this solution and uh, maybe we're gonna deploy SharePoint. 
And then, oh, like every 90 days, and we've got this restriction where we've got to you know, rotate the certificates or change an account password somewhere. So they actually, customers are defining that as a script. Here's how we're going to automate that process and storing it with the original code for that project. So from the beginning, the idea of the tasks that need to be orchestrated are just coming all the way through. So as you deploy that task, you also line up the, org deploy the project, you also line up the orchestration of tasks, and it's just one seamless thing. And then it doesn't take 10 people to manage it anymore. All of a sudden, five people can be influential across 20 projects. Uh, so the numbers really add up. Uh, the second one, over one million nodes scanned every day with DSC. Uh, again, that's looking at the, uh, the, the diversity of platforms by shifting into that Azure management and Azure compute organizations where the DSC engine is actually being used. Uh, and you can think about DSC as get, set, and test. So in a lot of these cases, we're focused on that first one, get. And we talked about uh, having that hierarchy of, of LCM and having these different engines uh, within DSC. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to do a ton around conflict resolution. A lot of it is where we're using that code base because it is so small and so fast now uh, for getting information for a variety of tool sets. And it's almost like any time we reach in that VM, let's just have the same open source tool set that you can trust and you can use on your own. Uh, the 500,000 plus servers managed by Azure Automation and Config, uh, super happy about that. Uh, this little donut on the right hand side speaks to this next data point. This was something that I was really interested to see how it plays out. So now within, like, if you think about the digital transformation talk and where things are being used, uh, you know, what's core value to my organization? Well, it's not patching my servers and it's not you know, getting a count of how many nodes I've deployed and what services are start and stopped. That's tooling and that's instrumentation. That's not my core value in my organization, right? So how can I just take a SaaS service and plug into it, make running those things just go away so I can move faster in my projects? What was really interesting is that we took these SaaS services, I was keen to see how much of this is just gonna be in Azure and how much is gonna get adopted uh, into on-prem data centers. And it turns out a ton. Like there's a lot of adoption and it's like, yeah, you, you, so you're saying I can just go here, put something on my servers and then patch management. I don't have to run my own WSUS instance and I don't have to you know, even worry about uh, SCCM collections and things like that. I just have a cloud service and handle all of my exclusions and maintenance windows and things like that there. Yep, and then I don't have to run any servers and like I, that whole thing just goes away. Yep, it's just go to your browser and manage it from there. Uh, so huge adoption of that on-prem, which has all been really exciting to see. And then the last one, and then we'll focus on roadmap, uh, is PowerShell Gallery. Uh, I would imagine, so if we do a show of hands, how many people are using PowerShell Gallery or the PowerShell Gallery commandlets, install module, find module, that's awesome. Uh, we just surpassed 100 million total downloads from PowerShell Gallery. Uh, everybody seems to love PowerShell Gallery and be using it. We, you know, there's obviously always going to be lots of work to do in every area. Um, and uh, you know, if, if you've got feedback on that one specifically, Keith Bankston is the PM for that. He's not in town this week. Uh, he took the week off to go on vacation with his family. So hit up Joey and I and let us know if there's a problem with the commandlets, if there's any problem with the gallery itself. Uh, we can be your, your funnels to Keith for feedback. You'll probably be yelling at me for something else already, yeah, so just, you know, just, just, together. just add it on. Go ahead. So this one, um, <clears throat> we decided uh, to try and kind of tie our technology roadmap here to the, uh, the sessions that are going to be presented here at the summit. Um, some of this stuff isn't going to be covered in quite as much detail. Uh, some is going to be covered in great detail uh, within the sessions, uh, but we wanted to make sure that you knew who was sort of linked uh, to each of these technologies that we plan on investing in uh, through July, probably beyond that. Um, all of these things that we have listed as sub-bullets are in some way, shape, or form uh, you know, going, to, going to be shown or introduced or released to you um, in June or July. So some of these things uh, you know, will be public preview, some of them will GA, some of them uh, you know, may, might be in very limited preview. Uh, but we can, we can start here at the top. So, so I have a, a talk tomorrow on PowerShell Core 6.1, um, uh, the, the 6.0 GA as well uh, that, that, that came out in, in January. Um, I'll also be talking about the roadmap uh, for OpenSSH in Windows. Um, that's uh, another technology that I work on, um, but, but primarily around PowerShell Core 6.1 and, and the new features that we're going to be uh, doing there. Um, I think this next talk is Michael, so he can, he can speak pretty well to this stuff. 
Yeah, uh, here's what we're going to do for the, the, the DSC session. Uh, I'm going to talk for probably 15 minutes about the, the roadmap. So if you didn't happen to see the, the blog post from last July, uh, I've published what our direction is. We're probably within a few weeks of starting the GitHub repo, uh, where I will start working with the community on documentation, governance, sort of staging where the open source project's going to happen. Uh, and then at some point, uh, by the end of the summer-ish, I don't want to overcommit and like set a date on it, uh, then you'll see a code check in and then we'll go through an alpha, beta, GA for the new DSC engine. On Wednesday, Norberto, who actually is the developer working on the new DSC engine, is going to be a participant in that uh, session. So I'm actually going to give him the majority, uh, at least 30 minutes, to walk through what does that new engine look like? He's going to demo running it and next copy deploy it into a server. Uh, there's a new REST interface for DSC, so he's going to take a look at that and actually show getting information about the state of a server over REST. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of cool stuff around DSC. And then we've also got uh, a lot of good stuff around Azure Automation DSC. And we're probably going to have a side session at some point specifically around feedback. And what that looks like, if you haven't, uh, even if you haven't seen Azure Automation DSC, we're working on an experience where you could send someone into Azure uh, in the portal and actually pull up a VM and without knowing anything about DSC, without knowing anything about Azure Automation, just say, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I just want to have uh, IIS stand up on this thing. So you could go to the a property of the VM, say configure, say I want IIS as a Windows feature, or this service has always got to be running, whatever state you want, and think about it as a point and click interface to get there and do some of that authoring, and then we'll take care of the rest. We'll take care of wrapping it as a configuration, compiling it, assigning it to the node. You just worry about the reporting from that point forward. It's kind of the, the, uh, the, the two themes that I think for DSC that are most important is uh, go deep and make it simple. And so I'll, I'll elaborate on those concepts and what that means. Uh, Amen has a session on Wednesday, he's going to talk, oh yeah, so uh, for Azure Automation I talked about that runbook service and what that looks like. We're adding support for Python, so even if you're not, if, you, if you're new to PowerShell, maybe you've got a greater skill set around Python, or maybe you work in an office where you're the PowerShell guy, but there are also people around you who work on Python. We want to make sure that as you're using these services, they're open, and that the language that works best for any scenario is available. Um, Let's skip down uh, on Wednesday. There's a session with the PowerShell hero. Uh, so Jenny's presenting on change tracking and inventory. Uh, really awesome demos in that one around file content tracking. So uh, if you're trying to figure out, okay, I've got these VMs and I actually want to track when files change, can you also show me what's going on inside those files? And Tim looks like doing a diff in source control. Uh, that's a really cool service and a cool way to look at it. And then increasing the responsiveness of that service to get closer to real time so that you, know, you can just go into a browser. And you can think about DSC as uh, I'm gonna assign these values and then if they drift, let me know. Change tracking is let me know anything that changes across there. Uh, and we're thinking in the future that's an interesting area where DSC and change tracking can probably have a, a closer relationship. Whereas you're authoring DSC, you can say, oh, well, what random changes happen across my servers? Give me, give me that information and I can probably get faster and faster and faster at knowing what I need to manage because uh, there's nothing worse than having that blank page of paper. Actually, uh, and as a quick teaser, um, I'm sure Jenny's going to be showing this in great detail on Wednesday, but there's also a lightning demo today on that file content uh, uh, difference feature, and it's some interesting uh, architectural challenges from a security standpoint that, that we'll be uh, talking through very briefly as well. So. Uh, and then two more sessions. There is one on Thursday. Zach is going to be presenting on that. Um, so that's all about update management. Uh, I'm sure Jenny probably participated in that one as well. Um, so that will include everything from, remember I, I was talking a second ago about having those configuration uh, mappings get closer and closer to the VM you want to manage. Then we can kind of explode it back out to the multi-VM management experience. We're doing that with all of the different management tools. So update management will be the same. You go to a VM, well what if you could immediately tell just from the status of that VM, whether or not it's been updated, uh, or if it's requiring updates, how many, and then it was that pending for the change window this weekend, what does that all look like? And then explode that back out to multiple VMs. Uh, and then also integration, if you are using SCCM on-prem and you want to integrate that into the service, what does it look like uh, to, to build that bridge and to have that integration? And then uh, the last session Thursday, Danny's going to talk about Azure Cloud Shell. That is a huge growth area, and that's one where if you haven't used it yet, um, use it. Think about just being able to run PowerShell in a browser anytime. That's going to be something we just continue investing in. It's something that, you know, there's been 
lots of ways to start surfacing nuances of PowerShell into different web experiences over the years. Uh, this is just a container you can spin up on demand in a browser. And even if you're not using it directly for PowerShell uh, to manage Azure, you could still incorporate, we, we've seen some interesting projects spinning up where people are just saying, well, there's a storage account and I can put modules in it and I can easily access that from my workstation and now, whether I'm on my phone or my laptop or my computer at home, I can easily get into this session and there's all my tools. What can I do with that even outside of Azure? So a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, Cl CloudShell is one of those projects that sort of pays dividends over time, right? Like we, we saw some people when it first came out go, I don't understand, like why do I need this? I have PowerShell on my machine, what's the big deal? Um, but as we start adding more tools to Cloud Shell, um, where you have more modules there by default, um, you know, we're, we're starting to push teams to be PowerShell core compliant so that more of these modules are going to work on the Bash Cloud Shell. Um, the performance has been increasing. You now can go to shell.azure.com for like direct shell. Um, all of a sudden it's like, wow, this is way easier than like standing up a new machine. Uh, and, and I find myself using it for yeah. random tasks, even, yeah, remoting into my home machine or whatever from that thing. So um, it's, yeah, they're going to have some fun, fun stuff to show off. So we're going to wrap up just 10 minutes early. That's not too bad. Uh, I know we're standing between you and lunch. I would imagine some people are going to want to take a picture with the PowerShell hero. <laughs> so uh, we can take advantage of that extra 10 minutes. We can probably organize the chaos somewhat. Okay, that's an easy answer. I say, say, say he'll help. He'll help out. We have it. We have it in summary here. Um, so again, digital transformation. It's happening now. Uh, if you're not on board already, get on board. Uh, you know, Azure Automation and Configuration are, are going to help you uh, bring those things on board. You know, do the lift and shift of your assets in uh, into Automation and Configuration. Uh, you know, that's 75% of of hybrid customers should show you that there's a ton of value add in doing that. Um, you know, we. We uh, uh, want to get to with the VM blades single single pane of, of glass. So this is like, hey, I want to be able to manage all my things from from one frame. Um, and then, yeah, we've we've got these. Uh, uh, you you want to do the do the second half here on the right? Sorry. My oh no worries. <laughs> you, I think you guys get the idea. We'd rather do pictures and questions and all that stuff anyway. So. There you go. Um, does anyone have any questions? I know Jeffrey and and maybe for Jeffrey too. Oh, in the lower left. Uh, this was part of Don's template, which uh, maintains or, or mandates that all of our presentations be released with the Creative Commons license. Um, so this means that uh, you can't use it for profit, non-commercial. What's the essay? Share alike. Share alike. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. So yeah, you can share this thing and do whatever you want with it as long as you don't make any money off of it. Thank you, Don. Well, CC evangelism. Thanks, guys. Was that it? That any, was any other it. questions? Yeah, do, we... any, do we need to ask? Or... They're going to be around, too. You can grab them. All right. Well, thanks very much, guys. Thank you, guys.